Okay, um, we're in this video, we're going to consider a more complicated combination problem that we're going to solve using ordinary generating functions. Um, by the way, this is now the third in the series of ordinary generating functions and how we can use them to solve different kinds of uh, combination problems. If you just found us on YouTube, and you kind of jump into the middle of this and you're wondering what we're doing. Um, if you can go to the website at digital-university.org, all the videos that we have for solving permutations and combinations and probability problems, all the videos are listed there um, in their proper order for you. Okay, in this problem, we want to consider how many ways can you make 21 cents in exact change if you have seven pennies, three nickels, and two dimes? And we want to solve this problem now by using an ordinary generating function technique. Now, we just kind of crudely drew out what the situation is. We see that, all right, we have seven pennies in our pile three nickels in the pile, and two dimes. And like we did in the previous videos, for each of these now, for the pennies, and for the nickels, and the dimes, using the same logic as we used in the previous videos, we're going to write a generating function for them. So, for the pennies, we may choose zero of them, when we're making our choice or we can choose one, or we can choose two, or we can choose three, and we can keep going like this all the way on up to seven. So that's it for the pennies. Now, for the nickels, again, we may choose zero of them. We may choose one nickel. Now, one nickel is five pennies, so one nickel being five pennies represent like this. Or we might choose two nickels. ten pennies at one shot, or we might choose three nickels. That would be taking out fifteen pennies, the equivalent of fifteen pennies, all at once. So that would be the generating function for the nickels. And then for the dimes, maybe we won't choose any, or perhaps we choose one. One dime is ten pennies, or we may choose two. So this would be the generating function for the pennies, this for the nickels, and this for the dimes. Now if we want to ask ourselves, all right, what's the number of ways that we can choose the pennies and the nickels and the dimes so that we have a total of 21 cents, or the equivalent of 21 pennies. And the solution is, or the answer is, we multiply this times this times this, and then we look for the coefficient of x to the 21, as we did in the previous problems. And that coefficient will tell us the number of ways, then, that we can generate the equivalent of 21 pennies, or a total of 21 cents. Now, having to multiply these three expressions together would be a, a long and tedious task, needless to say. And why are we multiplying them all together? Of course, that's the technique. That's how we get the generating function we want to consider all three of the pennies, the nickels, and the dimes, the entire group. But 
So it's this times this times this. But really, we're not interested in the whole long expression. We're just interested in, well, OK, in that whole long expression there, what is the coefficient of x to the 21? That's what we really want to know for our problem. And if we think about it, we should be able to find that out just by looking at these exponents here and see how we can get them to add up by multiplying, how we can get them to add up to 21. For example, we could take x to the 20th times x. That would give x to the 21. So there's one way. x to the 20th times x to the first. That's x to the 21. So this would mean then two dimes plus one penny. Okay, um, let's see, what if we have x to the 10? We could have that, x to the 15, times that. That would give us x to the 21. So we would have x to the 10, x to the 6th, and x to the fifth. Those add up to 21 to give us x to the 21. And let's see. This would correspond to one dime uh, we have x to the six and x, that's one nickel and that's six pennies. plus one nickel. OK. What other ways can we get? Um, we could have this times this times x. Let's see, we have x times x to the 10 times x to the 10. That also will give us x to the 21. So here, that's one penny. Now, this x to the 10, that represents two nickels. So it'd be one penny plus two nickels. And this x to the 10, we multiply this times this times this. One penny plus two nickels plus one dime. OK, um, here we have x to the 15. We can multiply that by x to the 6. And that's 6 pennies there. Plus x to the, that's 3 nickels. OK, um, and there's nothing else that really jumps out. I think we've exhausted our repertoire. So you see there are one, two, three, four ways that we generated x to the 21. So when we multiply all this out, this times this times this, the coefficient of x to the 21 would be 4, which means that if we just simply multiply these out very tediously and saw, oh yes, for x to the 21, that has 4, so it would be 4 different ways of making the change. That would be true, but thinking a little bit what we're doing and doing it this way, we saved ourselves a lot of work. And now when we realize, yes, there's 4 different ways of making the change, but we could identify what those different ways were by doing it like that. So that really is all we had to say for this video. But you can see, compared to the past videos, it's a more complicated problem. 
on using ordinary generating functions. Um, in fact, to solve this problem without an ordinary generating function would be quite difficult. But again, just like with the simple uh, videos, the logic in setting up the generating functions for each of the individual members, that is for the pennies, the nickels, and the dimes, it's the same logic as before. We can choose zero pennies, one penny, two pennies, three pennies, all the way up to seven pennies. Now for the nickels, we wrote them like this, as x, one nickel is x to the fifth, so you can keep everything in terms of pennies, in terms of cents. One nickel is five pennies, two nickels is ten pennies, three nickels is fifteen pennies. So we wrote on the generating functions for the nickels, we said, okay, we might not choose any, or we might choose one nickel, or two nickels, or three nickels, and same thing for the dimes. Then, once we did that, we were interested, once you multiply all this together, what is the coefficient of x to the 21? And, because that's our problem, says, how many ways can you make 21 cents? And that would be the coefficient of x to the 21, we multiply these together. Fortunately, we didn't have to multiply it together. We could just look at it and see the different ways that we could get x to the 21 when we multiply these together. Okay, that's it for this problem. Come back and join us for the next video, and we're going to try and consider some other problems that are even more complicated.